I was home alone one night back in 2009. My parents were out on their weekly date nights. One of those had one too many at dinner and passed out in the movie theater kind of dates. Anyways, I had just returned from my afternoon jog. Being the hot August day, I had worked up quite a sweat on my run, so I had decided to take a cold shower and clean up a bit. My house doesn't have air conditioning and was quite stuffed up, so I decided to open a few windows to circulate the air flow within the house. I can remember opening a window in the kitchen, two windows across from each other in the living room, and one window in the basement. I knew I was going to be spending my evening down there watching movies since it was much cooler. I had my shower, got dressed and went downstairs to make myself some dinner. I took my dinner down to the basement and flicked on Netflix to start my binge-filled night of new shows. I do not recall falling asleep, but I must have passed out not long after eating my food and lying down. When I woke up, it was dark outside. The only light being cast into the basement was from the dimly lit TV screen. It was now freezing in the basement. I could feel a cold breeze circulating the room from having the window open for too long. I got up and walked over to the light switch that was located at the bottom of the stairs. I closed the window, then went back to turn off the TV, grab my dishes, and head upstairs. When I got upstairs, all the lights were off, indicating that my parents were still not home from their date. I cleaned the dishes, put them in the dishwasher, and closed the window above the sink. Just before I went to go up to my room for the night, I remembered that the windows in the living room were still open. I walked over to close the one window by the TV, then over to the next which was located by the front porch. I noticed that my mom's vase with fake flowers was knocked off the table in front of the window and the flowers were sprawled out across the floor. I didn't think much of it at the time, maybe there was a strong breeze and the curtains had tipped it over. I closed the window and started picking up the flowers. As I was cleaning, I heard a faint squeaky sound, what I could only imagine was a door handle being twisted. I listened as hard as possible. Following the squeak of the handle was a creak in the hallway floor upstairs. A pain shot from my stomach to my chest and I froze. What seemed like an eternity of being bent over with my one hand holding the vase and the other clutching the flowers, I slowly stood up. I looked out the front window to check the driveway for my parents' car, hoping it was one of them upstairs. The driveway was empty, my heart sank. I quickly but quietly put the vase and flowers down on the table and silently began walking over to the bottom of the stairs to look up. As I got closer to the stairs, I heard two more creaks on the floor, which caused me to stop dead in my tracks. I waited, listening, nothing. I was now only a few steps from the stairs. I took those last few steps and put one hand on the railing. I peeked around the corner and only saw darkness. I didn't know what to do. Do I flick on the lights and let the potential intruder in my house know that I'm coming upstairs? Do I leave and go to a friend's house? Do I call my parents? Do I grow a pair and just go upstairs? I decided to turn my phone on silent and go to the kitchen to text my dad, making sure I was close to the back door for an easy getaway, he said. It's an old house, it's just settling after a really hot day. I told him about the sound of the door handle twisting. He just assumed there was an open window upstairs and the wind was knocking a door against the frame. Was that it? Could it just be a window that was left open? I felt a huge chunk of my anxiety start to fade after talking with my dad, so I decided to grab a glass of water and head on up the bed. I flicked on the lights for the stairs and started making my way up, but slowly a tiny knot in my stomach from before. I got to the top of the stairs and noticed that all of the doors were wide open except for mine. My parents' room and spare bedroom were on the left, and the den and my room were on the right, with a bathroom at the end of the hallway. Though as my dad had predicted, my door was cracked just enough that a breeze could be making it hit the frame. It being as hot as it was today, it wasn't unusual for my mom to open all the doors and windows upstairs. I exhaled a sigh of relief, now fully confident that my dad was right. I turned on the lights to my room, did a quick look around and walked over to my nightstand to put my water beside my laptop, then went off to the bathroom to get ready for bed. As I lay in bed trying to get sleepy, I was watching my favorite reruns of Seinfeld on my laptop. Then out of nowhere, I heard a sound of something slowly scraping my closet door. I quickly flicked on the light beside my bed. 
My closet door was cracked open ever so slightly. Questions started racing through my head. Was it open the whole time? Was it closed when I came in? I was positive that it was closed when I came in. Before I even had time to rationalize my thoughts, I heard the most disturbing, creepy, quiet, sinister laugh I've ever heard in my life. No horror movie could ever replicate the sound I just heard. As soon as I slid my laptop off my legs, the closet door burst open and someone was standing in the closet. My clothes were partially covering their body and face. I looked closer and there was the most sickly, palest, dirtiest woman I have ever seen. For the split second that I saw her in horror, the image was burned into my brain forever. She had no shoes on her disgusting, dirt-stained feet. Her skin was sickeningly white with cuts and dried blood from her face, down her arms, all the way to her legs. She was wearing what I assume used to be a white nightgown, was now a discolored mess of dirt, blood, and who knows what else. Her gray, blue-veined, sunken in face closely resembled a decaying skeleton. The rest of her face was hidden by my clothes. She asked in a quiet, grumbling, raspy voice, Have you seen my baby? That was enough for me to grab my phone and run. As soon as I was halfway out my bedroom door, I heard her shriek, Give me back my baby, and clothes hangers thrashing around behind me. I ran as fast as I could to the upstairs bathroom and locked the door. It was only a second later that I heard a huge crash against the door, along with a woman screaming in a devilish tone demanding I return her baby to her. I called 911 and the operator assured me the police would be there as fast as they could. I jammed my feet against the door and held my back against the sink, trying my hardest to make sure the door stayed closed. The woman would not let up though. Her shrieks turned into low, demon-like grunts and her banging on the door turned into heavy bodily blows. With what seemed like an eternity, I heard a heavenly sound. I heard the police call out that they were entering the residence. I yelled at the top of my lungs that I was upstairs. All I could hear next was a mixed commotion of the officers yelling and the woman growling. The officers ended up pepper spraying the woman, and it took three of them to be able to force her to the ground. She was yelling in a possessed-like state the entire time. I did not come out of the bathroom until the cops assured me she was out of the house. The cops told me she was likely on drugs, or an escaped mental patient from the next county over. I tried telling them that she sounded like she was possessed or something, but they chalked it up to the woman just needing her medication. My parents arrived home shortly after I gave my statements to the police. We moved out of that house a month later. That was one night I was home alone that sadly I will never forget. So I wasn't home alone, but I was with my mom. I was in the bathroom and she was in the room next to it. Both rooms are on the same side of the hallway, by the way. I heard her go out of the room she was in, walk past the bathroom, down the stairs, and open and close the door at the end of the staircase. This door made a lot of noise at the time because it needed to be oiled or something. Either way, I went out to the bathroom and downstairs into the living room, but she wasn't there. A few minutes later, she came down and told me that she heard the same thing but thought it was me. We still don't know what happened, and we live in the same house, so everything is okay, but it's still a bit creepy. I was 19 at the time, and I was home visiting my parents and grandmother on Christmas break from college. A little insight on my parents and grandmother's house is that it is a two-story home, and it's not abnormally old for a house, maybe around 50 years old at this time, maybe a tad bit older than that. I don't know of any dark history on the land at all other than my grandfather passing away in my grandmother's room back in 99 with lung cancer. It wasn't a surprise the hospital let him go home to die in peace, and we all knew it was coming. He had a great life, so nothing sinister that I know of. Anyway, my parents, sister, and grandmother were all out doing something. I can't remember what exactly they were doing in town. So they asked me to stay at the house to feed the dogs. My grandmother has like 10 dogs because after my grandfather passed, all she's really done is try to fill a void. Which is understandable in a way, but seriously, she has way too many dogs. I agreed I would stay at the house for them. 
I'm a homebody anyway and don't really like being around crowds, so I kind of looked forward to being alone by myself with satellite TV. My grandmother and my room were on the main floor, while my parents and my sister's room were upstairs on the second floor. My sister was 15 at this point, but she had this pink star-shaped doorbell on the outside of her door that's been up since she was a kid. It's probably been about an hour at this point since I've been alone. I was watching some documentary on the History Channel when I heard stomping around coming from upstairs. Now I've heard some footsteps upstairs before when I was home alone, and even with friends over. Yeah, kinda creepy, but I was kind of used to it by now. From where I was sitting, I can see the entrance to the stairs to the right. I didn't really pay any mind to it, so I continued watching TV. It was probably around 10 minutes ago since I heard the footsteps when I heard that little doorbell go off twice in a row upstairs on my sister's door. Every hair on my body stood up. I muted the TV and listened for about a minute. Nothing happened. I told myself that the thing is a little old and might have some faulty wiring. Right before I turned up the volume it went off again. Only once this time, like it was messing with me. I stared at the stairs almost expecting someone to come down and laugh and say it was a joke, but nothing. I went up to the stairs and looked up at the stairway leading into pitch blackness. I was scared to turn on the light and illuminate someone standing at the top of the stairs next to my sister's room, but I turned on the light anyway, and there was nothing there. I went up the stairs and turned on all the lights and went up to my sister's door and pressed the doorbell button. It worked normal, and there wasn't any problem that I could see on it. So I took it off the wall and took out the batteries and put them in my pocket, leaving the batteryless doorbell on the bed. I turned around and started walking out of the room when as I got to the door, the doorbell went off again. Chills instantly went down my spine, and I felt a presence I've never felt in that house before. I went downstairs trying not to freak out and felt the batteries moving around in my pocket. It went off again several times in a row before abruptly stopping mid-ring. I thought that maybe if I ignore it that it will go away. So I thought I would watch something cheery. I found a SpongeBob marathon. It has been probably around an hour since the doorbell incident, and I've nearly forgotten about the whole thing when out of the corner of my eye, I saw a black mass the shape of a huge dog. Now my grandma only owns Shih Tzus and a Chihuahua, so there isn't anything taller than my knee in the house. But this black sort of transparent mass was huge, like a big-ass wolf. It went from the hallway behind the couch, then sprinting out the back door, causing the big heavy back door to fly open and slam into the wall. I jumped so high out of the chair, and every dog in the house was flipping shit. Not like the annoying bark they do when someone strange is around, but more like they were terrified. I jumped up and ran outside to try to see this mass, but only catching the ass end of it running into our workshop. We had a motion light out there, and it triggered the light on in front of the shop. The shop was obviously not in use, so the light inside was off, and all you can see from the outside is the door slightly open, but nothing but darkness from inside. After this thing ran inside the shop, it turned around and stared at me through the slightly open door. Now this is what gave me nightmares for a long time. When it stared at me, it had this yellow glow emitting from its eyes. That stopped me dead in my tracks. I no longer wanted to pursue this thing. I called a friend to let them know what happened and talked to them until my family came home. I haven't really told my family what happened that night because I didn't want to freak them out or have them telling me I'm crazy. I'm a pretty logical guy who doesn't really believe in paranormal things. I've had a lot of weird and creepy experiences in my life and maybe I'll tell you guys some more stories sometime, but that was one that really tripped me out and kept me up for a long time. I was sitting in my bed scrolling through TikTok at about 7 p.m. I heard someone open my back door. My room is next to the back door, so my wall shakes a bit when the door is open and shut and walk into my house and walk up the stairs to my kitchen. I could hear the footsteps above my room. I immediately rang my best friend and told him to quickly come to my house because I think someone's broken in. He lives down the road from me, so he only took about five minutes to come. When he came we searched the whole house and no one was there. Still can't understand what happened. I often hear footsteps around my house and people talking during the night, but every time I check no one is ever there. 
It's causing me now harm though, so I just choose to ignore it. I was home alone, and I will never forget what happened. Okay, so. When my parents got divorced, it of course left some impact on me. My mental health got worse, and when it all happened, I was also bullied at school. I started to hate myself, and I stayed up the whole night crying. I was like 11 when it happened. You might be thinking that I was too young to be experiencing that, but I'm not lying I was really that age. Okay, let's get to the story. So my mental health was probably at its worst, and my mum decided to leave me home so I could get more sleep since I haven't slept really good in a while keep in mind that I had severe hallucinations. It's probably like 1.42 and I wake up I hear a strange noise coming from downstairs. I try to ignore it, but it sounded like the noise was coming closer. So like every little kid would do I decided to check it out. I opened the doors leading to the stairs and I saw something peeking over the corner as soon as I saw it, it disappeared. Also I gotta say this. Downstairs we have the living room and the bathroom, but to get to the bathroom you gotta go through the living room. Okay got it. So I also had to go to the bathroom. So I closed my eyes and just went for it. But I ran into a wall so I had to open my eyes. And there wasn't a wall I ran into nothing. Like I was in the middle of the living room and then I saw it. A shadow-like figure was standing in front of me. I screamed at the top of my lungs, but no one was home so nobody heard me. I started running upstairs. Also I was really into like demons and stuff, so this is where I knew this part from. I quickly ran into the kitchen and grabbed some salt. I ran into my room closed the door. I tried to barricade them, but I rushed it so it didn't work. I made a circle of salt around me and I started praying to God and hoped that this was all just in my head. I heard my door being opened, I realized that soon there will be no one to hear my prayers, but as soon as I looked up at the figure, I passed out and when I woke up it was like 3.52 p.m. My mum always gets home at around 5 p.m. So I looked around and the figure was nowhere to be seen. I looked for evidence that all of that happened and I did find one it was a scratch on my door. I even took a picture of it. When my mom with my younger brother got home I immediately told her and showed her the scratch on the door. But it disappeared so I looked at the picture, but it was also gone. Then I heard a deep voice giggle and I looked in the kitchen and the figure was standing there peeking through the doorway. To this day I can still hear his voice in my head. My sister and I are often left home alone. We don't mind because we hate leaving the house, and we're both very responsible for our age. One day I was sitting in my room, and I heard a kitten mowing in my parents' room, so I got my sister. We grabbed my hockey stick, and a rolling pin walked into mom and dad's room, and sweeped the place like we were in Doom or Call of Duty or something. We thought it was someone who had broken in and was making cat noises to bring us into the room because we were two teenage girls so we didn't have weapons to hit a cat, we had them to hit a human. We found nothing. The same thing happens whenever we're left alone in the house. Another creepy experience I have is walking to my room and seeing a short girl with long black greasy hair and a stained white gown standing above my sleeping little brother. I looked back and didn't see it so I got my sister and we sweeped the room again. Nothing. We woke up our brother and had him sleep in the living room. There was also one time I was crying in my closet alone and I heard someone whisper SHH be quiet or they'll hear you. Freaky as F. I bought an old cottage with a thatched roof and three bedrooms in the southern UK. My plan was to start a family in the countryside. Everything was going well until the third night I slept there. The house was nice, well arranged, and the previous owners had left furniture, which surprisingly was in good shape. The furniture was of good quality and not too worn out. On the third night, I was sleeping alone. I remember being woken up around three in the morning by some sounds from the backyard. The backyard wasn't very big, just about a hundred meters wide, and most of it was just lawn. There were some trees along the edge of the backyard, but most of it was open space. 
One thing that made me a little uneasy was that there was a lane right in front of the cottage. This lane was a road that anyone could use to drive past any time in the morning. Where I used to live before, we didn't have that because it was a dead end. Basically, if you drove in, you had to turn around to leave as no one could drive through. But in this new place, it surprised me a few times at night when I saw car lights going by at 4 in the morning, waking me up. That time was particularly difficult for me as I'm not the best sleeper, and moving to a new house is stressful and tough, even for the most experienced movers among us. On the third night, I got more anxious when I woke up because of a sound. This time it wasn't from the front where the cars and headlights were, it was a noise from the backyard. I looked out the window and sat up in my bed. I saw a person standing at the end of the lawn. I started rubbing my eyes as if there were stardust in them, making them a bit foggy. I thought maybe I was imagining things or seeing things. I rubbed my eyes again, and the person was gone, so I figured it was just my imagination. I went back to sleep and woke up the next morning to do my usual morning routine, brushing my teeth, going to the toilet, and having breakfast. My usual plan was to wake up around 6 a.m., have some breakfast, and then go to work. I had a mortgage to pay and had just put a deposit on this cottage, so I couldn't afford to miss work. Any fixing up or decorating had to happen after I finished work, but there wasn't much that needed to be done. Like I said, the whole place had been maintained really well. My garage was at the back of the cottage. It was quite small, and I could barely fit my car in and out of it. I had an old car called Apollo, so it was really tiny. Even with a small car like that, it was a tight fit to get it inside the garage. After I finished getting ready in the morning, I locked the front door and held my car keys. I walked to the back where the garage was so I could unlock my car and go to work for another 8-hour shift, which was always a bit boring. When I got there, I felt confused. Something didn't seem right. I looked around and soon noticed that something was wrong with the lawn. There were big marks made with spray paint all over it, forming words. It was like a message. I got pretty mad right away because I thought someone had vandalized my own property. I stood there looking at it, trying to see what the word said. The message was, you are not welcome here. It gave me chills, but at the same time, I was determined because I wasn't someone who easily gave up. After this happened, I never heard anything more. I don't know if it was the neighbors or who did it, but they knew I had just bought the cottage and they didn't want me to stay. None of it made sense. Even today, I still live in the cottage and now I have three kids. But after that day, things felt different living in a house. Knowing that someone out there doesn't want you there is tough. You keep wondering why, but I never found out why that person never showed up again. Maybe they thought they could make me leave by painting that message. Well, I don't give up easily. They'd have to do a lot more than that to make me go away. I usually stay home when my parents run errands. It's usually pretty quiet, and I like to have the house to myself. I had been in my room on the computer when I thought I heard my mom's voice outside. My dad was at work, so it was just me and my mom. I thought she had just gotten home with my siblings. Just as I heard it, I was on my way to the bathroom. When I finished, I walked out and saw that the living room TV was on. So my first thought was that my siblings had done it, or it was my mom. It was pretty quiet, so I just thought they were in the basement. Again, the TV was on. Mom, are you home? I called out. No answer. I went upstairs to check if they were in my mom's room. My siblings' room, mom's room, and my room were all right next to each other. No one was in there. I noticed that my sister's room door was closed, and it had not been like that when I went to the bathroom. I heard her TV and heard Disney Channel. I tried to open the door, but it was locked. She always locked her door, but would open it if someone tried to get in. Nothing happened. Disney Channel was still playing, and I thought she was purposely trying to ignore the person at the door. I went and got a toothpick to pick the lock on her door. When it clicked, I opened the door. The TV was still playing, yet no one was in there. I'm usually a skeptical person, but now I was starting to get scared. I called out again to see if my mom was home. Still no answer. I went out the front door and began to dial my mom's number. She hadn't answered. 
I called four more times and yet still no answer. I typed in our code to open the garage door and had this horrible feeling of being watched or someone being behind me. I backed away from the garage door and saw that my mother's car was not in the garage. Who the hell was in my house? I opened the garage door quietly to grab my shoes when I noticed that it was dead quiet inside. The TVS were no longer making sounds. I grabbed my shoes and began shutting the door when it happened. It was like a whisper that traveled through the wind. Don't try. My blood ran cold. I slammed shut the door and put on my shoes and ran out of the garage. I typed the code again to make it shut and ran out to the street. A shadowed figure was standing dead center of the garage. It was like a holograph. One minute it was there, the next it was gone. I couldn't make out its features except that it looked dead. I ran. I ran and didn't stop until I made it to a popular park a few blocks away. I arrived there, and it was filled with people as usual. I climbed my favorite tree until I got as high as I could. Kids were screaming in excitement for the slides and swings, kids playing basketball, the parents sitting on the benches watching their children play. Then I saw it again. The same figure I saw in the garage. A gust of wind hit my face. Along with it, I heard the same whisper. You can't run for much longer. Then it was gone again. I finally got a call back from my mother asking where I was. I told her I was at the park and tried to explain the best I could about what happened. She didn't think much of it and came to pick me up. I haven't had any more experiences with this since yesterday, but I will update as soon as possible. I was sitting playing video games at 1am on the phone with a girlfriend. She was falling asleep and the game I was on had a very quiet part. Suddenly a large bang came from the bedroom closet five feet in front from my spot. I instinctively look up at the open sliding door part of the closet, and at the top shelf near the ceiling I see my dusty Guitar Hero controller falling or moving left. It was a sliding motion that had it hit the inside wall of the closet. It was a very clear motion that resembles it sitting on a box and moving off of it and falling straight down, so a diagonal motion downwards. My girlfriend wakes up annoyed asking WTF, I'm doing that so noisy at this hour of the night. Plus, I was wearing earbuds for the phone call, so it was loud enough to be picked up by the small earbuds and wake her up and annoy her. I was initially annoyed too thinking WTF shifted or broke potentially and maybe created some annoying mess I'll have to sort out. I didn't immediately feel spooked or scared at all, but I kinda got freaked out when I walked over because nothing was out of place. Nothing fell other than the guitar I witnessed. And the spooky thing was that the guitar was seen falling from thin air, like nothing was above or below it. We never used the topmost shelf, yet alone hardly ever even used the closet in general so things in the closet shouldn't be disorganized or potentially falling apart. So things immediately didn't add up, so I investigated heavily. I basically searched the floor for anything that must have slipped and fell that in turn launched the guitar up into the ceiling and wall at a super strong speed. Then after finding nothing out of place in the entire closet, I reenacted the sound created, and that's when I got goosebumps and told everyone in my house what happened. I first dropped the guitar from the ceiling and let gravity reenact the sound, and it was barely any sound at all. So then I reenacted the motion I saw where it looked to be sliding off something from up near the ceiling so it kinda tossed it lightly into the wall and again goosebumps. The sound was barely loud at all. So then I chucked it hard into the wall, and sure enough that was close enough, but still not as loud. So I threw it super hard and was like wow that's the sound. It was some very serious strength. Much much more speed and strength than any mouse or rat could cause. Way more strength than something falling in the small amount of space that was up there. The shelf was about 6-8 inches from ceiling only so not much can chain react and catapult things around into the wall like that with such limited space. Gravity is too weak in such limited space, and still nothing could have fallen out of the closet and the bounce it up and back inside. That's more unrealistic and more haunted if that happened. And the spookiest thing about this was that I saw it moving off of something when there's nothing up there higher, then it where the guitar landed and was originally resting. It's like it went up then just flew into the wall. My mom downstairs heard the noise too. 
She said, yeah, it was very, very loud. And I'm a huge skeptic of ghosts. If I didn't have the girlfriend on the phone to hear it, I'd honestly just write it off as an audio and visual hallucination. I'm not okay with a random hallucination because that's not healthy, and I've never hallucinated before. But since my mom and girlfriend heard it plus, I saw something clear as day moving on its own, I'm lead to believe it's a poltergeist. The thumping ghost is what poltergeist are apparently named from. Sadly, in coincidence, the next door neighbor of our townhouse, we share our building with killed himself roughly exactly a year before this event happened. I'm still a huge skeptic, but how cliche is this story? But since I lived it, I can now share my experience and be one of the many other identical stories like this. Freaking weird, but cool, I guess. This is a story of the time I was the most scared I've ever been in my whole life. When I was 12 years old, my family went to our cabin in the woods on a Saturday Sunday. I refused to come with and wanted to stay home because I was addicted to gaming, which usually wouldn't work and my parents would make me come with them. But this time was the first time I was allowed to stay home alone, which surprised me. But I was happy and sat by my computer the second they left the house. They left early, maybe 2 p.m. on the day. I had a Nokia Lumia 520 or something so I could call. I probably gamed for about 10 hours straight before it started to get really windy. And it was in the late winter, so it was completely dark outside. I got chills but I continued gaming. After a few hours in the middle of the night, the power went out because it was a big ass storm. When the power went out I freaked out I had barely any light. And I was scared of dark at that time and my house is really big and old so it made sounds all the time. I moved myself to the TV room which was centered in the house in second floor because I felt I had most control there and I didn't dare to walk downstairs. I sat there with my phone playing Flappy Bird or SMTH trying to calm myself down and hoping the power would get back soon. At this time I have no internet as well so I couldn't see the weather forecast. I suddenly hear a door slam. I got freaked out and my whole body froze. I remember I sat in the sofa with my knees tucked in and a pillow between my chest and my legs. I keep hearing sounds from downstairs telling myself it was my cat. Then I hear steps in the stair, solid hard steps and squeaking noises in every step. Steps not possible for a cat to make, that had to be a person. I managed to scream the police is on their way. But my body was still frozen in this position. I didn't sleep a second that night, and I don't remember much more than that. Other than when my mom came the next day I was still sitting in the same position and I cried my eyes out when she came upstairs and hugged me. I did not stay home alone the next cabin trip. I was wet around 8 and was home alone. I was upstairs in the living room with my dog watching cartoons on the TV. All of a sudden I hear a noise like the type of noise when you have a window wide open and the door closes. No windows were open at the time though, so it was pretty creepy. I screamed down, hello. Like a dumb person in a horror movie, nothing answered. I thought it might have been something else, I don't know what else. I hear the noise again, however, and at that point I call my mom who's at work. My mom doesn't answer, so I call my grandparents, my grandparents were out of town. Basically this sucks for me since I'm 8 and scared. I then heard a noise like a bunch of plastic shopping bags that were stacked on top of each other falling down. At this point I know it's real, since my dog is starting to bark at it. I call my stepdad after talking to my grandparents, while I'm calling him another door slams. My irrational 8 or so year old self decided to call the police. The police came and checked the whole house and found nothing. I got in some trouble by my parents for calling the police. It's still unexplainable for me to this day. I was 15 when this happened, and it still scares me to this day. From that day on, I hate staying home alone at night. I was out with my dad for some shopping, a typical Friday evening, and I was in a good mood. We started making our way back home when one of my dad's friends called him. He dropped me off at the house and went to his friends, which meant I would be home alone. I got inside the house, went into the living room to watch TV, 
picked up the remote, and as I was about to turn on the TV, I heard my bedroom door slam shut. I wasn't spooked by that because it usually meant I had left the window open, so I wasn't really bothered about it. About an hour later, I decided to go to my room to get changed. I made my way upstairs, and as I opened the door, I felt a chill running down my spine. The window was shut, completely shut. I was frozen in fear, terrified, but I quickly tried to ignore it. So, I went back to the living room and tried to watch TV. But something was not right, something felt weird. It felt as if I was being watched, yet I was all alone. I was scared, trying to shake it off, but I could not ignore it. And then the electricity cut off. My heart started pounding, I was breathing heavily, chills racing down my spine. I was sitting there in total darkness, scared to death. I tried to listen, but it was silent. All I could hear was my breathing and my heart pounding. So I decided to fight this fear and get a candle from the kitchen. As I was making my way to the kitchen, I heard faint footsteps coming from my room. I didn't know what to do, terrified, thinking it was over. So I quickly ran to the living room, being careful not to make any loud noises, and tried to pretend I was asleep so that whatever it was would leave me alone. I hoped it would just leave. I stayed there, trying to hear the footsteps, but it was complete silence. Suddenly, I heard the footsteps again, every step getting closer. I switched on my phone's flashlight so I could see. I stayed there with my eyes half open, pretending to be asleep, my heart pounding faster with every step. There he was, a very tall man, thin and bony, completely bald. He just stood in front of me, then started smiling. His smile was so evil, his teeth too big to be normal, so white as white as snow. He just stood there and smiled at me for what felt like hours. Suddenly he said, I know you can see me. His voice was very deep, but somehow calming. Then he wiped the smile off his face and left the house. To this day, I have not told anyone about it, but here it is. I still have no explanation for what happened. There were no signs of forced entry, so please tell me if you have any suggestions. Not home alone, but this shit was hella scary. I had mild insomnia a while ago, couldn't sleep most of the time, I just lay on my bed and stare at the ceiling. Also, me and my brother share a room. One night, I was wide awake, brother was fast asleep as always. It was around 3 a.m., the door wasn't locked, but was shut all the way. I heard a knock on the door, totally ignored it. Heard another knock two minutes later, ignored it again because I was literally shitting myself. Then after about five minutes, dude, I kid you not, the freaking door literally opened all by itself. I woke my brother up, asked him to check what it was. Literally nothing. It wasn't even windy outside or something, the windows were shut. Shit was unexplainable. A few days after this incident, was sitting with my brother in the living room, watching a movie. The power went off all of a sudden. I saw a dark lady-like figure standing in a corner right next to our TV. I could literally hear heavy breathing and bro the room went so cold suddenly. It was like 140 outside yet still. This may sound like a dream, but I remember it so vividly it has to be a memory. I swear on my life it was real. One night, when I was around 4 or 5 years old, I was having trouble sleeping. I decided to get up and go sleep with my parents because sleeping with them seemed to help whenever I couldn't sleep. But something seemed off as I tiptoed down the hallway towards their room. When I got to their room and opened the door, they weren't in their bed. But what was in their bed was a giant sphere with little arms, legs, and a face, letting out a yawn. It turned to look at me, not seeming surprised to see me. Are you the moon? I asked. Yeah, it replied, smiling a bit. Why are you in my parents' bed? I asked. I'm tired and would like to sleep here. It answered. Can I sleep in here too? I asked. Yeah, it replied, scooting over for me to lie down on the bed. Good night. I said curling up on the bed. Good night, it said back. Then I fell asleep. I must have been in too much awe that the moon was in my parents' bed to ask where my parents were because I just stared at it the whole time before going to sleep. I woke up the next morning in my parents' bed, 
in the exact same position I was in the night before when I crawled in with the moon. When I walked out, my parents were making breakfast and eating their coffee. I still didn't question where they were the night before, and I didn't tell them about the moon. It's been about 15 years, and this memory comes back to me every now and then, and I can't explain it. The whole thing felt too real for it to be a dream. Not a ghost story, just a crazy coincidence. One weekend I was supposed to alone from Friday to Sunday. Saturday night comes and my brother decided to come back home. I still do my nightly rounds, make sure all the doors are locked and windows are closed. Set the alarm and head to sleep. At 3 a.m. the alarm is going off, doesn't wake my brother up so I run to check, and it said detection in zone 6 that's the basement. I was like nope, got my brother, and we both went to check the basement. We go by the sensor, and there's a spider chilling on it. Let me tell you, had my brother not been home, I would have definitely called the cops because I wouldn't go check the basement on my own. Out of all places in the, the three-level home the spider picked to sit on the sensor. A couple months ago, I was on the second floor in my room studying for a test when I heard a knock at the door. Naturally, I went down to see what it was, but when I opened up, nobody was there. I figured it was a ding-dong ditcher and went back to my room. Thirty minutes later, the same thing happened, but I still didn't see anyone. Another hour passed, and I shot out of my room when I heard aggressive barging on the front door and a man screaming in frustration. Went downstairs and looked through the peephole, nobody there. I figured I must be hearing the neighbors, so I started back towards the stairs to go back to my room, and literally halfway up the stairs I heard the usual creaks that come from the front door when it is opened. Naturally, I turned back completely freaked out since the door was locked, and I hadn't heard a key being turned, but still the door was closed. I ran back to my room, closed the door, and called my friends to talk about it. The knocking ended after that. It was during the summer when I was 15. I was home alone most days and I had just woken up. I was in my upstairs hallway when I sneezed and from downstairs I heard my dad say, bless you my name. I walked downstairs to say good morning to my dad, except my dad wasn't home. He was at work. All of my family was at work and I was home alone. It still freaks me out. I need help. The day started off completely normal. I woke up, it was a beautiful Sunday, or I thought. I took my dog Theo on a walk around the neighborhood. The neighbors were getting ready for their grill out. The birds were singing, the neighbor's orange cat Pluto was chasing a squirrel. Yeah, no normal neighborhood crap that goes on. We had walked a mile, and on our way back, there was something falling from the sky in the distance. I couldn't make out the shape, it seemed so small and maybe metal. I was in awe of the blue fire that was surrounding it as it came through the atmosphere. Down, down, down it went soaring at incredible speeds. It went past the tree line and then it was out of sight. Then it crashed and shook the ground. Simultaneously my husky froze. He started to growl towards the direction the object fell and the hairs on his back stood up. I had never heard him growl like this, not even at Pluto. Hey Theo, let's go home, buddy. I said softly to him. He stood there. He even started to pull against me to try and go towards where the thing had crashed. Theo, come on. I tugged on his leash. He just was so focused it weirded me out. It was probably just space garbage falling and crashing. Or at least I thought so. I pulled him with a little more force. He did that cough that dogs do when they strain themselves on their leash. After two minutes of coaxing him to follow me, he actually listened. So happy to be going back home, I was humming to myself as we walked towards our house. Something was off. The birds had stopped singing. The negbers were just gone. Even Pluto seemed to have disappeared. Theo was whimpering. I had an uneasy feeling like I was being watched. I stopped and looked around. It was too quiet. Everything was so silent besides Theo crying and my heartbeat, which started to pump faster. It might have been stupid, but I was scared. 
I called out into the street. H, hello. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. My dog's crying got more desperate, as if to beg me to take us home. I felt myself starting to shake. The deafening silence was making me sick. I knew I was being watched at that point. With a light jog, I crossed the empty street and cut through my neighbor's yards to get out of open sight and maybe see someone through a window. As I kept moving, I looked thought windows. Nothing. No one. No animals either. Panic was surging through me until I saw someone. It was Miss Sam. She was around 70 and was shriveled with age. Although she had always been very sweet. So through the back screen door, I called to her. Hello, Miss Sam. I called out of breath. She looked at me with much more speed than she should have been able to. She was twitching. I took a step back. Although she was in her tiny kitchen and I was outside, the distance suddenly wasn't enough. Are you, um, okay, I managed to speak out. Her head cocked to the right side slightly. Then the most terrifying thing happened, she smiled. Not the friendly little old grandma smile. No. She smiled wider than was possible, even with all that baggy skin. And she smiled even wider yet. Her mouth ripped and dark blood started to slowly ooze down her cheeks, making her look like a mix between Jeff the Killer and an old vampire. Theo, I realized too late, had been growling towards Miss Sam, which he never did. Miss Sam slowly opened the door and stepped out. Her bad posture she usually had was replaced by a perfect one that made her taller. She was still smiling and twitching as she slowly walked closer. I was frozen with fear. What kind of crap was going on here? Thankfully I was gripping Theo's leash so tight that my knuckles turned white because he pulled me out of my trance. We ran like our lives depended on it. Our lives probably were depending on it. I looked back and I almost passed out. There in Miss Sam's driveway was Miss Sam, dead. And standing watching me run was the smiling Miss Sam. She was slowly following us like we were in some cheap cliche scary movie. When we were out of sight, I took Theo through an ally and made it to my house after making sure Miss Sam wasn't following us. I unlocked the door with shaky hands and quickly turned the deadbolt. I then shut all the blinds and locked all the windows and the back door. I peeked out the window and people were now wandering the streets. Someone spotted me and began to smile the same smile as Miss Sam. I quickly shut the blind and started to breathe quickly and heavily. Something is so wrong. Theo is running all through the house whimpering. I stupidly look out the window again, and they are walking up my driveway. I don't know what to do now. Please someone anyone help me. I'm so scared. As we speak I can hear them laughing. Oh god it's such an inhuman laugh. I have a storm cellar a short run from my house to it. I don't know if I could make it. Please help there isn't much time. It was a sad day when I was told my grandpa had died. For as long as I can remember, I always spent a week of my summer holidays with Grandpa Boris and Grandma Olga, and those days were the best times of my life. My grandpa was a slender and tall man with a thick mustache and always wore odd socks. He had lots of stories to tell while he still lived in Russia. My favorite was how he acquired his prosthetic arm by punching a bear in the snout while Grandma was giving birth to my father in the woods one morning. My grandma was a petite and loving woman who taught me how to cook and bake. Mostly down to how I was quite skinny while growing up and it made her worry for me. Why, you're slowly becoming the best cook I know, Darren, she joked one day. Aside from me, of course. I was taught other things like how to write my name in Russian, how to defend myself by using a scarecrow as a practice dummy, how to tie a knot, etc. The saddest part was having to go home after my grandparents said goodbyes to me and my parents at the train station. At least I was able to bring home a new jumper that grandma had knitted for me and some things from the war that grandpa's father once had. It was grandma who was the first to die. Trauma to the head, I was told, but not much else. I remember grandpa becoming more reclusive after that, but managing to appear at family Christmas parties. We tried our best to make him be as welcome as we could. My father was still quite wary of Grandpa because he thought that he didn't approve of him marrying an English woman as opposed to a Russian-born woman. 
I didn't want to inquire any further about it in my mind. It wasn't really my place. One summer, I remember being told by my mother that I wasn't going to see Grandpa that time, and never again, for that matter. My parents didn't know the cause of how he died, but doctors told them it must have been due to an underlying heart condition that went undetected for months or even years. It wrecked my 14-year-old brain really hard. How two of the people I've known since I was little had just gone like that. My mother tried to reassure me that Grandma and Grandpa were reunited in heaven, which gave me some happiness, but it felt like my soul had died with the grandparents I loved so much. At the funeral wake, I stuck to the corners and walls like ivy, while other relatives offered their condolences to me and made small talk. That night, I couldn't sleep a wink for quite a while, but when I finally did, I heard a bang and a scratching at the window that made my eyes snap open immediately. I looked to the window beside my bed and was felt cold all over me. I was looking at the face of a human-looking creature with sunken ice-like eyes, gaunt and shallow cheeks, shriveled lips and knife-like fingers clawing at the window. He I assumed it was a he, was just staring straight ahead, his teeth bared like a wild, rabid animal. My heart sank when he noticed me and smiled, giggling like a maniac. He slowly scraped his knife fingers on the glass of my window, whistling a tune at me. I wanted to scream but fear wrapped at my throat like a noose and when I found the courage to rip the blankets off of me, he was gone in a flash. I looked out the window, but in the darkness I could see nothing. No movement, no sign he had even been there ever. I stayed awake, not wanting to go back to sleep, worried that whatever that was would come back and do God knows what to me. I can't tell you why I didn't tell my parents about it, but thinking back, what would they have done if I had told them? Two years later, and I was sixteen and getting ready for my GC says. My parents told me that they were going out for a friend's birthday that night, so the house was all mine. I saw this as exciting since I have no siblings and my parents trusted me enough to not set the house ablaze. Now I am king of the castle, I loudly proclaimed as my parents made their way to the car when it got close to sunset. I managed to get some homework done and got the idea to call up my girlfriend at the time Catherine and watch movies and eat pizza with her. The house was all ours so why not? No luck there, unfortunately, apparently she'd come down with the flu. Oh well, more pizza for me, I suppose. It was getting near midnight, the witching hour, but it was going to be a weekend and I could stay up for as long as I want. That's when the front porch's light turned on. It was a motion detection light and I brushed it off. It was probably just one of the cats in the neighborhood wandering around. The light just kept flickering on and off and I knew that it wasn't one of the cats. I put down a pizza slice and unlocked the front door to look outside a stupid decision, all things considered, but I felt safe where I was. Nothing was there. I closed and locked the door and returned to where I was. Before I had time to sit back down, I felt my heart stop. There was a man in the room. He had gray, curly hair and a thick mustache. He was wearing a cream-colored fleece jacket, high-waisted trousers, two different colored socks and brown loafer shoes. I recognized that one arm looked much weaker than the other one, and I knew this man from anywhere. Grandpa, I asked. Hi there, Darren, he greeted. You've gotten bigger since I last saw you. Have you been eating your veggies? I tried to string a sentence together, but I didn't know what to ask him. I thought you died, I tried to stop myself from saying that, but the words were out of my mouth before I could do anything about it. I did, he confessed, sighing. It's a horrible thing to go through, both knowing that you've lost someone and losing yourself. So why are you here? I sat down next to him. I wanted to tell you something, Darren called it off, he said, and I've never seen him with such a serious expression on his face. And I want you to listen. You're now old enough now to know the truth. I was confused. What had he come to tell me after two years of nothing? He cleared his throat. I never told you the story of me and your grandma, he began. When I first met her, I thought she was the most beautiful woman in Russia, no, the world. We got to know each other and I got irresponsible. I conceived your father outside of marriage one night. Our wedding, though rushed, I enjoyed and Olga looked more radiant than the sun. He smiled at the memory and stared off to the distance. Then his smile faded. What I didn't know is that her family had ties to criminals. 
I found this out one day when I was visited by her father and her uncles. Her father got me to my feet and he said, Kaladoff, I heard of you were very ambitious to deflower my daughter and expect me to give you a father's blessing. I say to him, Mr. Ilyushin, I say, my intentions are good and I can be a suitable husband to Olga and a kind father to our unborn child. One of her uncles says to me, my brother is a generous man, Boris. We agree that, if you think of leaving Russian soil to run, we'll make sure your child disappears in Siberia. What happened then? I ask, shocked. Though I cannot remember exact words, I can remember him telling me that he curses my bloodline, and that he will hunt me and my descendants down if there's a child born on foreign grounds to a foreigner. He looked to his prosthetic arm. Do you remember the story of how I lost this arm? I think it was your favorite. I hesitated, trying to re-submerge the memories. You fought a bear while Grandma was giving birth, weren't you? Grandpa chuckled. That's only half the truth. It wasn't the forest where Olga was giving birth. No, she was at the hospital and I was sprinting at full speed to get there. On my way, I was attacked by Mr. Fedorov, who was nicknamed the Bear because of his size and how he could rip a man's throat out. He was a close associate to Olga's father and didn't want me seeing my own child. I threw punches and insults at him, and in turn, he sliced my arm off. Don't worry, I did manage to see my child, your father. I named him Vasily after my own grandfather, and I feared for his life every day. I scratched my brain for questions to ask him. But how come you began life over here? Why not stay in Russia? Why not stay in Russia, he repeated. When Olga's father had died, I saw my opportunity to leave with her and Vasily for a new life. I constantly urged for Vasily to be with a woman from Russia, but he ended up with Mary, your mother, and had you. I never told Vasily or Olga about what I was told back then. I regretted it every hour I was awake and every second when I was asleep. He looked at me and smiled. But you became the smartest and brightest grandson a man can ask for. What about Grandma? Is she here too? I almost sounded excited but Grandpa's frown made me almost regret asking. No, he solemnly replied. She served her time. All she ever wanted to see was her family happy. I have to stay behind because I want to protect you from whatever her father sends your way. Suddenly, I heard the scraping of metal against the walls and giggling. At that moment, I felt like I was fourteen again and terrified of those icy eyes. Do you remember those self-defense lessons I taught you? Grandpa asked. Yes, I asked as the scrapes came increasingly close. Why? Use them, he said as he disappeared in a ghostly mist. When that door opened, greeting me was the same figure from two years ago. His figure was emaciated, and he was clothed in nothing but tatters and that wicked smile. I didn't hesitate when I threw a punch to his rotting nose, inducing a cracking sound. I fled to the kitchen to find a weapon to defend myself, but he gained on me at record speed, grabbing me and chucking me to the ground. He flipped me over and, using his knife hands, tried to stab my eyes. Using the same tactic, I grabbed the back of his hard head with my fingernails and jammed my thumbs into his eyes, causing him to release his grip. I dashed to the kettle and thwacked him over the head with it, but that didn't stop him. He uttered garbled words that sounded like Russian to me. But before he could slice at my mouth, I could smell iron in the air. The creature started to vomit up blood, and I noticed the enormous hole in his stomach, which made him stumble to the ground. It took me a while to catch my breath as I stared at the creature, and my mind had millions of things going through it at a thousand miles per hour. I came to my senses and dashed to the phone to call the police. They arrived quickly, alongside my parents, who I also called. My mother rushed towards me tears ran down her face as she held me tightly. I managed to tell them and the police everything, minus me seeing the ghost of my grandpa. I had to stay at a friend's house while the police had to check everything. The body of my attacker had vanished, and it made me feel all sorts of nausea when investigators told me that they were unable to locate the man I described to them. I don't blame them. The incident made me quite the talk of my school that Monday because it made the local news. I didn't really mind the popularity, it made me feel like some kind of hero. Something I never wrapped my head around was why it suddenly stopped. Was that grandpa's doing? I always hoped that was the case. 
that was five years ago, and I haven't had any other incident with the strange creature. That was until last night. I started hearing whistling and giggling outside my window at stupid hours of the night and saw those eyes through the crack of my curtains mocking me. I've grown since that night, and I'm ready to end this. This is for you, Grandpa. I was like 12, and my dad was a lawyer. He had just let go of a case because his client was kind of insane, always interrupting the judge, stuff like that. Anyways, when he let go of the case, the client screamed and yelled, and they had to call the cops on him. I was home alone, and I was scared that the man would come to my house and murder me. While I was sitting there, watching Naruto, scared out of my damn mind, I heard a knock on the door. I hid in my closet. Someone was ringing the doorbell now, banging in doorbell. I was working up the courage to grab one of my dad's guns and answering the door when the banging stopped. I ran out to see what happened. There was no one at the door. I went outside and looked for anyone who could have been there. No one. Jesus man, that still haunts me to this day. I am currently at university in the UK and live in a small two-bedroom apartment with a friend of mine. I've been here for about a year now. Every time I'm in this house alone, I feel as if I am being watched. And it's not just a little feeling. I literally run from one part of the place to my room when I turn off the light. It's not like anything is being malicious or anything, but it's just the constant feeling and looking over my shoulder that I am starting to struggle with. Sometimes I wake up to a loud voice in my ear, but I just put that down to my imagination as it's always close to when my alarm will go off. It's not constant noise or interference or anything. It's one real loud shout, as if I was shouting as loud as I could write in my ear. Sometimes I can remember specific words I heard in some of the times I've woken to a shout, mostly things like, wake up or get up, but I always put it down to my imagination. It's been happening more often as of late, maybe because I've been alone here all summer, I don't know. I constantly hear walking around on the floor above two-floor apartment when I am in my room. I usually put this down to guests from upstairs as I can always hear them walking when I am on my second floor, but then I seem to also hear walking when I'm in my room in the part of the house below street level. It's a pretty old house, I think, but I'm not entirely sure about its history. I could really use any ideas you guys have or any advice. Much of the time, I just try to tell myself it's just the house settling when it's real quiet and I hear things at night, but the walking is so clear on the floor above mine that I am starting to find it hard to tell myself that it is just the house. The feeling is always much more intense when I am alone in the house, but I still get it just hanging around when my flatmate is there. He says he gets it occasionally, but not so bad, so I don't know if it's just me or if there is something spooky afoot. This story happened when I was 17 years old. I was by myself at home while my parents went on a trip to Toronto outside the US. We had lived there for three years when I was a kid, so my parents were visiting friends we had made during that time. My older brother was out of state in college at the time, so I was alone for the whole week. It was a Friday night, and one of my friends was supposed to stay over to keep me company for the weekend. Sadly, something came up, and he had to go back home for the night, leaving me alone at home. I wasn't worried or nervous because I had been staying home alone since I was 12 years old, and as I got older, I had spent quite a few nights on my own. I am not sure, but I think my friend left around 10 o'clock that night. So I sent a message to my mom telling her he had to go and that I would be alone for the night. She said it was okay, but to be careful and set the alarm. So I got ready for bed and decided to sleep in my parents' room because they had a big TV there with lots of shows, which I didn't have in my room. I turned on the house alarm, got into bed, and started searching for a movie on TV. My dog was on the bed with me, so I knew she couldn't have caused what happened next. About an hour later, while I was changing channels, the house alarm suddenly went off. I quickly looked at the alarm unit by the bedroom door and saw the red light flashing on and off. I froze as there was a loud beeping that kept happening over and over. 
I think it took me about 15 seconds just to understand what was going on. Did the alarm go off on its own, I wondered. It can't be a door opening. I started thinking about everyone I knew who might have a key to open one of the doors in my house. All the doors were locked, and I knew my brother wasn't coming back for the weekend. I knew it wasn't my friend who had just left because I got a text from him saying he was home. I thought about all my friends, and each one of them was either out of town or busy. I was sure none of my neighbors had opened any doors either. All of this went through my mind in those 15 seconds when I couldn't move on the bed. Finally, I got back to reality and hurried to my parents' bedroom door. I closed it and then locked it. I didn't turn off the alarm because I knew it would call the police after one minute of beeping. Plus, I thought the loud alarm might scare away whoever broke in. Once the door was locked, I went to my mom's bedside table and took out a revolver she kept there just in case of emergencies like this one. Now, I'm only around 5 feet 4 inches tall, and I knew that if someone came through that door with bad intentions, they could easily overpower me. I got the gun, checked that it was loaded, and turned off the safety. I held the gun up and aimed it at the door, but I kept my finger away from the trigger like you're supposed to do until you're certain you need to shoot. It was hard to believe that I had a gun and was aiming it at something, maybe someone if they were dangerous. I sat there, getting myself ready if someone came through the door. I never thought I'd have to do something like this. I stayed calm and didn't let my feelings of fear take over. I knew I had to stay quiet and think clearly just in case something actually happened. I was kneeling on the floor like that for what felt like a really long time, but I think only about two minutes actually passed. The alarm was still making noise, so I thought I should call 911 just in case the alarm system was broken and didn't call the police. I dialed 911, told them everything that was happening, and they sent two police officers to help. The person on the phone stayed with me until the cops arrived. They checked around the outside of my house before knocking on the front door. I turned off the alarm and put the gun away. I opened the front door and talked to the officers. They said they didn't find any signs that someone had broken in from the outside of the house. They asked me some questions about what went on, and I told them everything. They also asked if I wanted to search inside the house just to make sure nobody had broken in and hidden somewhere. Now, thinking about it, my answer was really silly. I said no, I think it's fine now. The police said they would stick around the area and told me to call them if anything else happened. I walked them to the door and locked it after they left. I went back to my parents' room. I checked on my dog to make sure she wasn't scared by all that happened. She's a small cocker spaniel, not really a guard dog type. Then, I finally called my parents and explained what had happened. My mom is always really calm, so she didn't get scared. I think I'm similar to her in staying calm, but my dad, though, was definitely worried about me as his young daughter being home alone. They asked if I was okay, and if they should come back early. I said there was no need for that, and I was sure nothing like that would happen again because the alarm likely scared anyone away. After talking to my parents, I realized I hadn't turned the alarm back on, so I went to the alarm system, put in the code, and set it. But nothing happened when I tried to turn it on again, so I felt confused at first. Then, I understood that the alarm only works when every door in the house is closed all the way. I felt really bad and said, Oh no, out loud. I realized I had to check the house to find out which door had been opened and triggered the alarm. That's when I realized how wrong I was to say no when the police asked if I wanted them to search inside the house. I went back to my mom's bedside table and took the gun again, getting ready for the worst. I walked to every door on the lower level of my house, holding the gun with both hands. Then I reached the hallway where the door to our garage was. Right there, I saw that the door to the garage was wide open. I got chills, thinking that someone had actually tried to break in and had succeeded. Our garage had two windows on the ground level, so it wasn't too strange to think that someone could come in through there. I turned on the garage light and held the gun in front of me. I looked at the two windows in the garage, and it seemed like they weren't open quickly. I closed and locked the garage door, and then tried to turn the alarm on again. This time it worked. After that, I went through the whole house with the gun, checking to see if anyone was hiding anywhere. I prayed the whole time, hoping I wouldn't find anyone and wouldn't need to use the gun. Luckily, I didn't find anything or anyone. 
After that, I slept with my parents' bedroom door locked and kept the revolver under my pillow for the rest of the week. When my parents came back from their trip, my dad checked the garage windows to see if they were forced open or something. Just like I thought, there was no sign of someone forcing their way in. My parents guessed that the garage door wasn't closed tightly, and a strong wind from outside pushed it open, setting off the alarm. We never really found out for sure what really happened that night. Since then, I have had one more experience with a possible break-in when I was in college, and I came home for the weekend. That story wasn't as scary, but I was alone again, and my parents were away visiting friends in Canada, just like the first time. Now I'm 23 years old, and it's been six years since that night. Whatever really happened, it's still the scariest night of my life. I can't even imagine what might have occurred if we didn't have the alarm system and my mom's gun to make me feel safer. Even though nothing bad actually happened, I want to tell everyone who hears this to make sure your home has an alarm and always, always keep a gun at home to protect yourself. The second house I lived in, which was the longest place I've lived in my life, was full of stories. Upstairs, I think there was a former owner who didn't know they were dead, and they'd walk around if you were the only person home. In the office, which is a room my dad moved the doorway to, maybe they couldn't access it anymore because of that. The basement had its own set of stories, and I think something else was down there. But my main story is from when I worked at a summer camp. There were a lot of typical urban legends associated with a camp, and one of them was actually true. Years before, convicts escaped from their transport and ended up hiding at the camp for a while before being found eventually. I wasn't there for that, but as urban legendy as it sounds, it was real. No kids were harmed. The convicts were mostly hiding in the lowest ground of the area, which was marshy, but would be seen at night walking around sometimes, probably to get food from the cafeteria. When I was there, there was a car accident nearby, and apparently, some guy walked around the camp with a head injury, and another person was also walking around looking for him. I said, what's up? Not thinking anything of it, as it wasn't crazy unusual to have a random new grounds guy, and he looked the part. If the camp wasn't so rural, I'd say that's not that crazy, but it's in the middle of nowhere, and the odds of the accident happening right there are something in itself. So the camp was one giant hill, give or take, with random flat areas until you got to the bottom above the marsh, which was a very large flat area. The oldest boys lived in what was called the hill, which was most of the way up. The girls actually lived above that, and then there were the upper fields and tennis courts, and a small lake. The lake is the origin of many of the weirdest stories of the camp, like ones that people had personally witnessed. Above those, although at this point the hills were no longer substantial, were the bunks for counselors that didn't stay with the kids, including my cousin who was there as a senior tennis instructor. I had to get something from my car, which was a walk across the top fields instead of getting too close to the girls' bunks at night and past the counselor bunks to the lot. I forget his name now, but one of the kids walked with me, so I was carrying whatever I got, and we both noticed a number of white glowing figures, kinda like the men you see on the men's room sign, somewhat featureless, far less than what we'd imagine as the Grey's figures of aliens, but they were all spaced out across the field and looked to be walking in our direction. He and I looked at each other and took off running all the way to the end of the field before looking back, and they were still there, slowly moving. We kinda jogged the rest of the way back to the bunks and confirmed that we both saw it and didn't know what else to do. We went back up a few minutes later with more people, and it was gone. Honestly, it's been so many years, my nature would be to say I must have imagined it, and if I saw it solo at this point, I'd probably have disregarded it. But I clearly remember discussing with him afterward that we both saw the same thing. I was alone for three days at home. I usually close all my door when I'm about to sleep, and when I went to sleep around 2330, Exactly at midnight, my bedroom door slowly opened up. I thought it was wind or something, but it gradually opened almost halfway. I was shocked to not understand what was happening. I did gave some calls who's there. But when I was about to get up, the door was swiftly shut, seemingly unnatural. 
I checked my whole house, but couldn't find any trace. Did not slept for the entire night. It was clear as day. Never happened again. Happened once and never again. Just one of those things. It was in my ex's room. He had to stay working late and put in extra hours. So he picked me up and dropped me off at his place until he came from work his job is closest to his place and I was waiting alone till he came back. Pretty usual TV on and his dog by me in bed keeping me company. Relaxing. Chilling. Nothing out of the ordinary ever happens. Been at his place for years and nothing like this ever happened. All of a sudden, I heard the bedroom door which was locked move, as if somebody very gently touched it and twisted it, but then changed their mind. This was already suo not typical and just this alone creeped me out because I knew how heavy that door was and how secure the lock was. I paused for a minute because I knew what I just heard. It couldn't be him because I didn't hear the original door of the house first. I froze then, immediately jumped and opened the door. I was so creeped out to see no one was there. I thought it might be him trying to scare me because he was a prankster kind but then thought impossible because the original door makes the loudest noise ever. Old house. Anyway, I don't know how I was so brave to just open it point blank, but it was so loud I had to see what it was. I couldn't just ignore that. Nothing there, I'm dumbfounded. I just stare at the empty hallway and scratch my head. I go back in the bed, continue watching TV. I'm still a little shook, but I try to ignore it until he comes back. When all of a sudden I see this gigantic dark figure, a human figure, probably about a professional basketball player's height and very wide. Like imagine a dark silhouette of a giant human, walking. Scariest moment in my life. I'm trembling just recounting the experience, it's been a while. X and I broke up three years ago. But anyway, the craziest and most scariest part to me was how I saw in a well-lit room and you won't believe what I'm about to say next it didn't come in from the door. It showed itself exiting the door, as if it was already in there and it walked by the bed, by the TV all the way to get to the door to leave. So my spirit theory is when the door rattled, it had come in, but it didn't show itself yet. Then as it left, suddenly I was able to see it. A lot of weird negative things were happening that particular month, I saw this entity. Things that usually never happen like my friend's huge fish tank fishes all died in one day. X got beat up by three different people grouped up on him all things I never thought would happen to close people of mine. And were highly unusual. Weird thing is he came home and I never told him. He's not a believer of that plus I was still in shock and denial the entire night. But I know what I saw. I almost thought if I told him it would make it even more real. Recounting this gives me the creeps even years later. He ended up moving out of that place a little while before when separated, and I think he's in a much better place after doing so. He was happier, lighter, and got so much more done. I think that house had silent but dark energy around. I live in a historic district of western New York. House built early 1800s, previously a funeral home for the surrounding area. I was sleeping on the couch in the living room because my parents were alcoholics and had horrible fights upstairs where my bedroom was and my brother was in the Navy at the time so he couldn't help. Laying on the couch playing GameCube I heard classic country music from the basement while my parents were upstairs not arguing at that time. By classic country, I mean country music that sounded like it came from the inception of country music. Old music. So I walked to the heating vent that used to be connected the, the heater in the basement, but was now just a hole covered by a metal vent where you could look into the basement from the first floor. I heard the music playing and water running from the laundry sink downstairs. I laid on the couch until I could not hear the music anymore because I was terrified. The whole situation lasted about 20-25 minutes. Alright, so I lived in a haunted house from when I was about 6 till I was 8. My mom would lie to us about it not being haunted, but my brother and I saw the ghost once. Anyways, it was daytime and I have a dog. She's a bigger American bulldog. 
My mom took my brother and his friend to his friend's house. They were at our house. So, like two minutes after my mom leaves, the floor creaking starts. It sounds like a human being is walking across the hallway. My dog runs up and starts barking at the wall. She's going nuts now. I get up because I'm scared I'm female, eight years old, and go over to my dog who's barking at the wall. I grab her by her collar to pull her back, but she won't budge. Then the floor starts creaking, and my dog starts to run. It looks like she's running after something. I grab her leash to take her out, but she is in the kitchen. I run to the kitchen, and pots and stuff fly out of the cupboards. I finally get my dog and wait outside till my mom gets home. I was home alone one evening watching TV. Both my dogs and the cat were sleeping off full tummies. All of a sudden both dogs jump awake and run over to the front door, look up vaguely in the area of the foyer ceiling light, and bark their brains out for three solid minutes. Even the cat, who usually ignores the dogs, goes over and intently stares at the same spot. I am yelling at them to stop, to come, to sit, to shut the F up, but they just keep staring and barking. Like a light switch they stop barking, and in the same instant, the cat also just turns and walks away. The puppies both go back to their beds and are back asleep in seconds. Had never done that before, haven't done it since. What the actual F. I got two stories. Disclaimer that I wasn't home alone, but was alone in the events. Story 1. As a teenager, I randomly woke up one night around four in the morning and was instantly wide awake. Something physically felt very off. I felt with conviction that someone was in the room watching me and I couldn't shake it. I peered in the darkness very intensely trying to find something that would explain this feeling. I couldn't find anything. I was feeling a bit freaked and I was convinced there was a reason for this feeling, so I got up and turned the light on. As I'm suspiciously looking around my now well-lit room, the fire alarm in my room suddenly started blaring. Shortly after, my parents rushed to my room after being woken up by the loud alarm. We all three looked around my room to see what could have triggered it. There was no smoke, much less a fire. My room was upstairs, and the only gas lines would have been to the water heater in the garage, so that couldn't have been it either. We couldn't find anything, and no alarm went off after that. What's weirder was the relief I felt after the initial shock of the alarm, because that feeling went away and I wasn't alone with it anymore. I know it sounds dumb, but it felt like a force of good triggered the alarm to scare away whatever the source of the feeling was. To this day, it feels supernatural when I think about it. Story 2. This one is more strange than it is scary, but I still think about it every now and then ten years later. When I lived in that same house, some of the upstairs floorboards would creak as you walked on them. As a result, I easily knew when someone was in the area around my door. One night, also around 4 a.m., I was playing COD with my friends online, and I heard the boards outside my door creak. Not unusual. It was somewhat common for my mom and sister to be up that late since they both dealt with insomnia. I didn't think anything of it. Shortly after, I heard my mom call my name, I took my headphones off to listen and see if she wanted to talk to me enough that she'd call a second time. I ended up hearing her call my name again from outside my bedroom by the bathroom. I responded, asking, yeah, and assumed she wanted me to come out to the hallway for something. I reluctantly told my friends I'll be right back to see what my mom wanted. Probably to clean up something I left out, I thought. I opened the door and was shocked to see nobody was there. All the lights in the house were off, and it seemed like everyone was sound asleep. I went and knocked on my parents' door to make sure she wasn't calling me from the bedroom. Sure enough, she and my dad were long asleep. It was a strange experience. A couple of years ago, I moved out of the apartment I shared with roommates and into a studio to live by myself. It was a nice little place, with the bed facing the front door. I had a neighbor super nice guy who would drink a lot with friends, come home, and knock on my door to keep the party going. It was the height of the pandemic lockdown at the time, so all we really did was drink at our building entrance. 
He was a bigger dude, about six foot two, heavier set. One night, I was starting to fall asleep. I was exhausted that day, when suddenly the doorknob shook and the front door swung open. I saw a dark silhouette at the door, with the hallway light surrounding him. The man at the door quickly moved towards me. In my sleepy haze, I thought it was my neighbor, wanting to invite me out. But then I realized the figure was much thinner than my neighbor. It stood at the foot of my bed, grabbed my ankle, and started shaking me. I couldn't move. But I mustered all my strength, kicked at him, and yelled, Get the F off of me. I woke myself up by yelling, and realized there was no one there. The door was closed, and the apartment was empty. I took a minute to make sure it was locked, put on a TV show to distract myself, and tried to fall back asleep. I realized later it was sleep paralysis first and only time it's happened, but damn, that shit was scary. I can still imagine what the hand gripping my ankle feels like. this is not as supernatural as everyone else's, but it did scare the pee out of me. One early morning at about 2 a.m., my husband and I woke up to our house shaking, and what sounded like a tornado, the whooshing was so loud. My son eight at the time also woke up. The whooshing, rumbling sound got even louder, and we three ran downstairs. I swear on all that's holy, I thought we were under attack by a foreign nation or be under attack by aliens. When we got outside, there was nothing in the sky, but you could feel the vibrations in the air as they disappeared. My husband was standing there shocked. My son was sobbing so much and staring at the sky. I thought he was going to faint, and I looked at my hands to find them shaking. I've never seen my hands shake. Yet, not one neighbor on our crowded cul-de-sac was outside with us. I couldn't believe it. The next day I asked my neighbors about it, but none of them heard anything. I checked the news, and it seems there was some disturbance heard by a few people on my side of town. But the closest Air Force base, San Antonio, lots of bases denied any early morning exercises. It remains a mystery. To this day, I always wonder if some alien craft got a little too close and was like, pull up, pull up, you're buzzing a human neighborhood. Crap, that was close. Bet there will be a few humans freaking out for the next few hours. This would be followed by alien laughter. I recently moved into this apartment, all by myself, and I'm absolutely stoked. However, after this recent encounter, I'm wondering I should get a dog, a gun, or both. Maybe I'm being dramatic, but this is what happened. Maintenance showed up today at 12.30 p.m. I had no idea they were coming or the time, so I was still a little sleepy and hungover. He needed to fix two locks and check my water heater. This took him 90 minutes because he was talking so much. First he gets here and is making conversation. He asked if my boyfriend or husband was at work and dummy is honest and says no my boyfriend lives three hours away. I did add that he visits frequently. He then asks if I visit him a lot and then again dumb hung over me is honest and I say I haven't seen him in a few weeks because of a car issue. As a counter, he asks what car I have, and I begrudgingly answer. He then fixes my patio storage lock, then told me to check it. When I do, he comments that I'm really tall. He then asks me if I'm the tallest in my family, and then asks my ethnicity. I thought he was flirting, but then told myself to chill. I added that my dad is really tall and lives five minutes away. This is true, thankfully. My dad is really tall and intimidating looking. When he is fixing my other lock, he is asking me questions. He asks if I'm 20 and says I look young. I told him I'm going to be 27. He proceeds to tell me he is 61 and starts talking about healthy food and his daughter. I start looking at the clock and trying to hint that I'm not interested because I have no spine and don't know how to say, Sir, I'm busy, can you hurry? He makes a comment that age is just a number and there at 60-year-olds dating 25-year-olds. Finally, when he is about to leave, he noticed the patio blinds are open. He asks if I leave them open, and then walks over to close them. He says we are friends now, and he feels like my brother. I'm standing by the front door because I felt that was really weird and wanted to be close to an exit. He comments to keep them closed because people could walk by and get ideas. Also, he kept commenting that he was impressed by me, a single woman living alone. 
As he is about to leave, he says sorry for talking too much. I should have made a comment then and there, but just say it's fine. He says if I see him around and need anything fixed to just let him know. Then adds if I needed company to watch TV and chat to tell him, and he can take his lunch break anytime. He says I need to be the one to ask him because he doesn't want to get in trouble with the office or my dad weird, and leaves. I just said, oh if anything ill say hi. Finally he leaves. I told my brother what happened, and he said I should tell the office cause that's weird. I'm just worried about him getting fired and then tracking me down. I don't want him to get fired, but want to request that he not be assigned to me again. The complex is big, and there are multiple maintenance staff. I always have my deadbolt, but now I'm just paranoid because he knows my car. What if he sees I'm not home and then enters my apartment and hides in my closet or something? Anyways, very creepy. I wish I did have a roommate or someone living with me now. Update. I told the someone in the office and the property manager is going to call me today. When I female 21 was about 13, I made the mistake of playing with a Ouija board with my then best friend. I understand now that this was a grave mistake, but 13 year old me had reasons that to this day, I can still sympathize with. I wanted to reach out to my uncle as he had died in my bedroom of a heart attack a short time prior. I wanted to ask him if he'd made it to the other side and if he was okay. He was the best man I ever knew and I was worried for him that and I never had the chance to say goodbye. We weren't alone in the house, but we were the only two people awake. Now from what I've gathered, not many people know that you can create a Ouija board with anything. For us, it was a sheet of printer paper and a shot glass. We started the session and followed every bit of advice we had found online. Phones were turned off, a white candle was lit, and we were beyond respectful. I was the primary communicator. I started with, hello, and got an immediate greeting. I asked who we were speaking with. A QJQ. Our makeshift planchette moved into a figure eight between each letter. Looking back, I see the warnings. Back then, I did not. I then asked, how old are you? 136. More figure eights followed. Knowing then that I was not speaking with my uncle, I still wanted to have this conversation. Would you be considered an angel? The figure eights stopped immediately, and our shot glass moved slowly to its mark. No. At this point, my heart was racing, and I asked the next question. Would you be considered a demon? Figure eights. Fast figure eights. The temperature in the room changed in a way that I can only describe as if someone opened a deep freezer right behind me. I would like to end the session now. The figure eights continued. I would like to end the session now. The speed only quickened. I would like to end the session now. Goodbye. We drug the shot glass to the word goodbye, and the force trying to stop us made it feel like the shot glass was drawn to its figure eight pattern on the table by a magnetic force. The energy felt normal again, and we threw away the paper. The rest of the night was uneventful. In the following weeks and months until I moved, I'd wake up in the night to the sound of my light switch flicking up and down. The light stayed off. I'd hear things falling in my closet, only to open the doors and everything be the same as I had left it before. My cat refused to enter my room, but my dog wouldn't leave my side if her life depended on it. Later on, I found out that the same type of events were happening to my friend. She'd hear her bedroom door open, but when she'd turn to look there would be no one there. She'd hear the shower running, only to be met with a room of steam, but no water indicating the shower had ever been turned on. I'm still terrified of that house, and I still want answers. I'm just glad that whatever was attached to us then has since left me alone. I am a 21-year-old female, and I live in an apartment with my boyfriend who is 25 and his best friend who is also 25. I had called the leasing office to ask for new blinds in my bedroom. Our bedroom has a glass window looking outside our balcony and to the view and we have vertical blinds. I'll insert a picture, except they go all the way to the floor. Sometimes the blinds get loose and break and they fall. In particular, we had at least five of them that kept falling all the time. 
I called the leasing office last week to ask for replacements. We weren't notified that anything was fixed and one blind still kept falling, so I called again. They confirmed someone had already been out to fix them, which they did, but must have missed one. I confirmed this and they said they would send someone over to fix them for me. That was yesterday. Before I get into the actual encounter, I want to say this. Previously I had a run-in with a maintenance worker. The apartment policy is that they are required to knock, and if nobody answers then they can barge in. A few months ago I had been in the shower and had gotten out wrapped in my towel to three random men inside my apartment. I was freaked out and quickly got dressed and asked what they were here for. Apparently our roommate needed something and didn't give us a heads up. The entire encounter they kept looking at me and one even smirking and smiling and it made me uncomfortable. My boyfriend ended up calling the leasing office kinda pissed and basically explained he wanted to receive a call anytime someone was coming over to basically notify me just in case. So today, I'm laying in bed. My class got cancelled and I'm waiting until 4.30 to go back to school, I normally wouldn't be home at this time. I heard a loud knock on the door and I already know it had to be the maintenance people. I quickly throw on some running shorts, I'm in an oversized t-shirt, and make my way to the door. However, the door opens instead and in walks a man. He is at least six foot, a big guy, he's not overweight, but he's not in shape either. I would describe him to be a linebacker body build. He's probably in his mid-forties early fifties. I'm standing in the middle of my apartment and I say hi. He stares at me and says, oh, no one was supposed to be home. I cock my head to the side and he emphasizes that he had called X and they said no one was home. I say, oh yes, that's my boyfriend. I'm supposed to be at school, but my class got cancelled. He steps into the house and starts eyeing me and I am instantly a little confused as to why he keeps looking me up and down and I'm feeling uncomfortable so I walk away into the bedroom to grab the broken blind. I yank it down and turn back around and while I'm doing so he says, X is your boyfriend, I say yes. He watches me put the broken blind on the table. He's still smiling at me and giving me a weird look, continuing to look me up and down before walking past me and into my bedroom. He stops halfway in my bedroom and turns around and says, So you have a boyfriend. I'm getting annoyed and even more uncomfortable and I say, Yes, I live with him. He asks how old I am and I nervously laugh and say I'm 21. He grins again and once again looks me up and down. You don't look 21. I hear this all the time, I look a lot younger than what I am. I'm also 5 foot 1 so that doesn't help at all. I say, well I am, with my nervous laugh. He keeps smiling at me and it's not an inviting smile. It's not one of those dad smiles where it's like, oh you're my daughter's age, that's why, or something like that. It's an uncomfortable smile. It is a smile that makes me uncomfortable and confused. I say nothing, and we literally sit there and stare at each other for about 15 seconds before I turn away and walk into the kitchen. I realize I have nothing to do so I walk back into the bedroom and grab the bowl I had been using and bring it to the sink. From the corner of my eye, I can see him watching me. It takes literally two minutes to change the blind, and he comes back out. Instead of walking straight to the door, he stops outside my bedroom which is right beside the kitchen. He just stares at me and I continue to busy myself. He isn't speaking and so I say, The broken blind is on the table, do you want me to throw it away? He doesn't break eye contact and he's still smiling, he says, What table? I know this MF can see the table to the right of him. It's literally in front of him. I point to the table, right there. He glances over and nods. Yeah, I can throw it away for you. I say thank you, and he starts to walk away, he glances back a few times before he's at the front door. He opens it and stands there for only a few seconds, but all of which is creepy and unnecessary. I'm not sure how to explain it, it seemed as if he was hesitating for a few seconds, so he pauses and then says, I'll lock the door for you. I nod my head and say thank you, and then he closes the door. This entire encounter was creepy. Update. I told my boyfriend the story. He was very upset and says he doesn't want maintenance in our apartment without him, or our roommate around especially if I am home alone. I'm not sure whether he plans to speak with them or not.
The reason they have a key because the apartment has a policy that any maintenance are allowed to enter. They have to knock first to let themselves be known just in case someone is home, and then they have the ability to enter. I don't feel too comfortable, but I also have a taser, wasp spray, and pocket knives in my home, so I feel safe and comfortable using those things if I have to. My roommate also works only five minutes away and never minds answer my calls or picking me up if need me, so that is always very helpful. Thank you for the kindness and suggestions. I appreciate it and I hope you all stay safe. When I was a kid, my family was really close to the neighbors across the street. I was outside playing with the daughter when my parents told us they were going to run to the store for a bit. We asked them if we could stay at my house. I had a cool Barbie dream house since her parents were home right across the street. My parents said yes and made sure to tell hers to keep an eye out. Once we were inside, we were thrilled to have the house to ourselves. Just like big kids, we made ourselves some lunch and watched cartoons for a bit. There was a sudden knock at the door and the fun began. Because of the urgency of the knock, I hopped up and ran for the door, thinking it was my parents who forgot something. After looking through the side window, I saw what looked like my friend's brother. I flung the door open, and there was a man who was not my friend's dorky six-foot-tall brother. The man looked jumpy and told me he needed me to come outside because he had just hit my parents' car. I immediately panicked and asked which one. He took a few steps back to look at the driveway and said, the red one. My mom's prized BMW. Now, don't judge me too harshly. I was maybe nine or ten, and someone had told me they ruined the car my mom loved just as much if not more than us kids. I blurted out that my parents weren't home, and he told me he still needed me to come out to see the damages. Because obviously, a nine-year-old can assess the damages to a 1990s convertible BMW. I looked back at my friend, and while we chatted, he reached out to open the screen door. It was locked, but it was one of those shitty plastic ones that could have easily just been yanked a little hard and pulled open. It wasn't until then that my alarm bells went off. I told him I had to call my mom. He started to protest, but I slammed the door shut and immediately called my friend's mom. Thankfully, she's a pretty intimidating lady and she marched right over before we could even finish explaining what was happening. The man was obviously startled by someone getting there so quickly. When she demanded to know why he was at my door, he stammered something about selling magazines. Obviously, he didn't have anything with him, so she told him to get lost or she was calling the cops. It was at this point I looked out and noticed a car pull up, and he quickly went to hop in. I think we all came to the realization at the same time that someone had been in a car waiting for him at the top of my street. My friend's mom turned ghost white with recognition, then immediately red with anger. Let's just say we weren't allowed to be home alone for a long time after that. I female 26 live in a flat building in a good area. It's a long, windy cul-de-sac, so there's not many cars coming in and out, unless it's people leaving or coming home from work. My boyfriend is away to Thailand for a month, and we usually take the dog out together at night. I went myself, which I was fine with, I usually feel safe. Last week, around 8pm, I left the flat to take my dog for a pee. My dog is extremely excitable, especially around other people. She just had her space surgery. She has a cone on her head and stitches that have to heal. I'm waiting for my dog to do her business, and a car pulls in and drives slowly past me. The guy did a friendly neighborly nod towards me, so I did a small smile back, you know, to be polite. The guy parks at the front of the building, and I'm at the other side of the car park on the grass with my dog. I'm watching my dog, trying to get her to hurry up because it was freezing I look up, and the man has stood outside his car staring at me. Freaked out by this, I turn my attention back to my dog. I keep looking over my shoulder, and he's staring with a creepy-ass smile on his face. I looked away again for a second, and he was walking along the road slowly towards us. I'm a really friendly person, I can be paranoid and aware, as any woman should be at night, but something about him made me feel scared. He's walking so slow, as if he wants to talk to me, 
so I hide behind a van mole, and I'm telling my dog, hurry up and pee. I can't see him anymore, which terrified the life out of me. All I hear are footsteps coming towards us. The guy peeks his face around the van, and my dog goes nuts. She's jumping around, barking aggressively which she never does with people, and the guy doesn't take that as a reason to leave. My dog is showing that he doesn't want his presence, but even though she's doing this, he continues walking towards us slowly. I start backing up and say to him to please leave as she's just had surgery, and she's too excited. In the most quiet, sinister voice he asks, what's your name? I couldn't really hear him. He kept repeating the question. I eventually understood what he was asking. My dog is still going absolutely nuts at him. I say again, please my dog's just had surgery. You need to walk away, she's too excited. Ignored again, walks towards us, asking my name. So I start walking away from him. He ponders for a minute, still smiling creepily may I add. He eventually backs up slowly still facing me. I swear he did this for at least 20 seconds. He walks back to his car, looking over his shoulder at me, then stands back at his car and stares for another three minutes. I pretend my dog is doing something when she's really just being a pain in the ass and just standing there. I look up and he's gone. I'm shaking sending my sister voice notes about what's going on. She's telling me, just go inside. But she doesn't realize I'm frozen in fear. Eventually, I see a woman and her son rock up to the front door, so I half jog over with my dog to go inside the same time as them. The front of our building has glass doors. I glance in and the man is standing there, waiting for us. I told the woman, this man has been following me and my dog, I'm scared. And she walks in with me. The man sees I'm not alone and walks right past us out of the building again. I run into the lift with my dog, get in and lock my doors. I decide to tell my two male neighbors about it, as my boyfriend is away, and they agree to run downstairs if I ever need them. I took a picture of his car and registration plate, as my twin sister gets the train home late at night after work, and I want her to be wary of him. Well, today I was out with my dog at 11 a.m., just doing our usual walk around the block. We walk into the building, and as we are heading to the lift, I see the guy peek his head around the corner. He was looking for me. He started walking towards me. At first I didn't recognize him, but then he smiled his creepy smile and I realized who it was. He said, hi, so I said, hi, then beelined for the lift. He came towards me and my dog again. I pressed the lift button just watching it come down from the sixth floor. He comes and stands closer to me again. My dog is going nuts at him. He asks what my name was. He has an accent. He asked again when I didn't understand what he was saying. I asked, what, my dog's name or mine? He goes, yours. I froze and said a fake name. He started to move closer. I had no time to pay attention. The lift was about to open and I could run away. He told me his name. I replied, nice to meet you. And finally the lift doors opened. I walked in and pressed the button to my floor, hoping he'd leave me alone. He ran behind me as I walked in and went, I'd like to see you again. WTF. Shivers ran down my spine. I was so creeped out. I replied that I had a boyfriend, but thanks. As I said this, the lift doors were closing, and he tried to stick his hand out to stop the lift from closing. Thank God they closed on time. I'm only on the next floor up, so I was so afraid he was going to run up as he could see what floor I got off at. I stopped for a moment and almost pressed a different floor, but I just wanted to get into my home and lock the doors. The lift opens and he's not there, so I beeline to my front door. There's a glass door to the stairs, and I swear I thought I saw someone coming up. I ran in and locked the front door. I was so confused by what just happened. Next thing I do, message everyone with the update. They told me to phone the non-emergency police number, even just to get it on record, so I did that, and the police arrived at my flat at 3 p.m. I explained everything to them, and they said I could either get the police to go to his front door and tell him to knock it off, or be next time he does something like that, tell him to leave me alone, and if he doesn't, phone the police as it would then be considered harassment. But for now, the police couldn't do more which is fair enough. I didn't want to anger him at this stage, as it's not a crime at this point, but why can't he just leave me alone? 
I've clearly shown that I'm not interested. It just annoys me so much that I can't even leave my house looking ugly as hell without someone being desperate for any female in the immediate area. I hate saying something's going on when it maybe isn't, but I just have a terrible gut feeling. Update. I hadn't seen the guy since the last incident. However, I saw him today. I again was taking my dog out to the toilet around 1 p.m. As soon as I left the main door, I look and the guy is sitting in his car. He clocked me. I started walking past his car when he got out and said hi to me. I completely ignored him and walked on by. I was preparing myself to shout at him if he kept following or talking to me. I went over to the grass, and the guy is standing at his car staring again. I'm a bit further away, so I text my sister letting her know that he was at his car watching me. She didn't reply, so I phoned one of my male neighbors, and he quickly got his shoes on and said he was coming down the stairs. I look back at the man, and it seems as though he has his phone out, recording me. I started shaking, working myself up to the point of confronting him and telling him to leave me alone. Next thing I know, my sister bolts out of the building and fast walks over to me and my dog. She said as soon as she came out of the building, she saw him back inside his car, with the car door fully open, and his back was turned to her because he was watching me. So she saw it this time. He looked at her briefly and watched her walk over to me. He started staring at us both. That's when my male neighbor got outside and walked over to us. The man continued watching as I told them both I think he was waiting for me to go back into the building, because why was he just sitting there? My sister had enough of it. So she told me and my neighbor to take the dog for her walk and stormed over to the guy's car. She said, excuse me, and he was shocked. She stood right in front of his car and explained that he needs to leave me alone. I'm not interested. I told him the dog had surgery and he wouldn't leave, which is unacceptable. She also said that I had mentioned about my boyfriend, so he needs to leave me alone. He just nodded and mumbled a few times. She said he looked frightened. She walked back into the building, so we took the dog a walk, and when we got back, he was gone. Probably got out of his car and ran back into his flat. I mean, he made me uncomfortable, so she did it to him. Now, if anything else happens, I'm phoning the police as they would then say it's harassment. Thank you to all the comments on my previous post. I take a can of deep heat on my walks, and I've been practicing shouting at him in the mirror, ha ha ha. Feeling much better now. I'll keep you all updated. Edit. I've also contacted my letting agency and sent them an email with all of the details, so they are aware thank you again to everyone. My parents rented this apartment in a really old duplex, like M talking 1-8800s, one of the first places built in town old. One night my parent went out of town and I was left home alone. I was 14 at the time and really big into gaming. We were on the second floor, and our front door, which was in the kitchen, had two dead bolts. We had no back door. To give context for the layout of this apartment, you would walk in the outside door, and there was a hallway that lead to the first floor apartment, and stairs that went up to the second floor apartment our apartment. Walking up the stairs would bring you to a little landing and our front door. Walking in the front door, you would enter the kitchen, and the wall to the right had counters, and the wall to the left had the fridge, stove, and a small closet or pantry. Turning left, you would walk into the living room. As you walk into the living room, on the left-hand side, is the door to bedroom number one, which was my parents. If you are back in the kitchen, and instead of turning left you turn right, straight ahead is a long hallway, and along the same wall as the front door is a giant row of shelves, and a door to another bedroom which was our storage room or parents' office, and also the smallest room. Going past the office, there were three steps that went down continuing down the hallway. All that was down here was my room, the bathroom, and the laundry room, which was at the complete back of the building, and the furthest room from the living room. Now, the laundry room had one of those doors that would automatically close because it had one of those hydraulic door closers that you'd see in stores, and the door would latch and had one of those deadbolts that would need a key to lock or unlock from both sides of the door. We had no key for the door, so we just never worried about it. The laundry room also had one of those pull cord lights instead of a light switch because old house. 
As stated previously, I was big into gaming, and because my parents were out of town, I could finally hook my Xbox up to the TV in the living room. While I was gaming in the living room, it was probably 11 p.m. or midnight. It's been almost 10 years, I can't remember the time, but I do know it was night, and I heard what sounded like a door opening, following by something crashing from down the hallway. This hallway always creeped me out at night, but I had to go down there anyway to use the bathroom, so I went to check it out. I opened the door to the office off the kitchen just in case, turn on the light. Everything looks fine except for my mom's laptop being turned on. I just ignored it and figured that my mom just forgot to shut it off before she left, or it was doing updates or something. Go down the steps, get to my bedroom door. I open it up and see that the shelf I had above my dresser broke and my books came tumbling down, knocking my TV over. Okay, no big deal. I'm kinda pissed off. But it's fine, I'll just take my birthday money and get myself a new TV since that was what I was going to get with it anyways. As I was cleaning stuff up, I hear another crash. This time it sounds like the lid of the dryer slamming down, and what sounded like the dryer turning on. I thought, oh, maybe the neighbor downstairs is going to do laundry. They had their own laundry room, which was right under our bathroom, and the bathroom was right next to my bedroom. Then I hear the washer start, and our washer was unique. It would spit water a few times before it would start filling, and I heard the spit. The neighbor's washer never did. Hers, you would never hear it filling because it was a very new washer and very quiet my dad, and I helped her bring it in and set it up because they are both elderly and didn't want them to try and figure it out themselves, since her husband was sick and in a wheelchair, and she was always taking care of him while also doing everything around the house and working. I walked out of the room, walked down the hall, and saw the laundry room door wide open note, the previous hydraulic door closer being mentioned. I walked into the laundry room and pulled the cord on the light to see the washer going, and the empty dryer going. I shut both off, closed the door, and went back to the living room, where I proceeded to fall asleep on the couch. I woke up I think a few hours later to the sound of intense crashing coming from down the hall, followed by the sound of water. I ran down the hall to the laundry room and the washer was going and it was on the spin cycle somehow and was so out of balance it moved its way to the center of the room and the water that I was hearing was a combination of water splashing out of the open lid our washer was very old and broken so it would go if the lid was up or down combined with the hose that somehow busted itself when the washer moved. There was so much water coming out of the hose that it was covering me with water head to toe and it was all pooling around my feet and going down the hallway. I got the water shut off, and I grabbed every towel I could possibly find to clean this shit up. I get it all cleaned up, and I think, hey, maybe I call my dad's cell, let him know. I searched the house everywhere, I could not find my phone at all, and I couldn't even find the three house phones we had. I remember thinking to myself like shit, if they come home and find this, I'm screwed. I walked to the bathroom, my clothes were soaked so I just kicked them off in the bathroom and went to bed in my own bedroom this time. I wake up the next morning and my parents were already home. I'm freaking out and hiding in my room, hoping they go get groceries or something so that I can leave my room. Then I hear the washer start. I remember thinking to myself, shit, they saw it. Then there was a knock on my door. My mom asked me if I had any clothes to wash, I said no. And then she asked me why I looked so concerned. When I told her about the washer, she told me that the washer was fine, the hose was fine, and everything. Then she told me to go shower and get ready. I told her, well, didn't I use all the towels last night, to which she just dragged me to the bathroom, and showed the cabinet stocked with towels exactly how it was, and that I was just being weird. Then I looked in the shower. My clothes were just in the tub, soaking wet. Now, my possible theory for this, though, is that I slept walked into the shower, since I did have a history of sleepwalking when I was a kid, but I still remember this shit so vividly like a memory. As for the shelf in my room, it was indeed broken. I grew up with just my mom, but sadly, she passed away when I was about 10 years old. It felt like life didn't have much meaning after that. It was tough and it meant my granddad had to take care of me. His house was really small with only one bedroom. This made things quite uncomfortable. 
When I first went to live with him, I had to sleep on the couch for a whole month. It wasn't great, and my granddad knew it too. He wasn't struggling too much with money, so he decided to move. We found a place closer to town, and it was attached to another house. This new place had two bedrooms, so I finally had my own room. I was feeling empty inside like I couldn't really pay attention to things anymore. In school, I caused a lot of trouble. My friends noticed I was different, and I didn't talk much to my granddad. Losing my mom felt like losing everything, and life was hard back then. The new house that we moved into was really creepy, and also not in great shape. On the other hand, my granddad was the only family I had left, even though I didn't spend much time with him when my mom was alive, so he was the closest thing I had to a parent. Just to clear things up, he never treated me badly or took advantage of me. He loved me and never saw me in any wrong way. For some time, my friends thought my granddad was treating me badly, but that wasn't true. The real story starts when one night we went to bed. Our attached house in the UK had an attic. An attic is like an extra space between the top floor and the roof. I'm not sure what it was originally used for, but in our attic, there was mostly dust and wooden structures like big planks and beams that held up the roof. On the second floor, there was a ladder that went up to a latch in the roof. If you open the latch, you could pull down the ladder and climb up. It was quite enjoyable, so it became my safe place. I enjoyed going up there even though my granddad wasn't a fan and thought it could be risky for me. The floor in the attic was mostly made of wooden beams. There were gaps in between filled with a strange foamy material. My granddad always warned me not to step on that part, saying it could break through the roof and I'd fall down. I guess that's why he didn't want me up there. One night, I was feeling really upset. I was crying a lot, and my pillow was wet from tears. I couldn't stop thinking about my mom. I went to the ladder, pulled it down, and opened the latch to the attic. I climbed up quickly, hoping this safe place would help me feel better. But as I got up there, I wasn't thinking clearly. I did something foolish and ended up stepping between the columns. My feet went through the roof, and I fell right into the second floor near the living room. I felt like I had hurt my legs badly. They wouldn't move, and I was screaming in pain. Just a few moments later, my granddad heard the commotion and hurried upstairs. His bedroom was on the lower floor, so he had to go up the stairs to reach me. He was in his 80s, so he moved slowly and had a hard time getting there. When he finally got to me, I remember him looking at me, then at the hole in the roof, and then back at me. There was a big opening in the ceiling, but he seemed more worried about me. He looked really scared and shocked, like he didn't know what to do. On the other end, one of my legs was clearly broken, but I didn't really feel the pain. I was still really sad and couldn't stop crying about my mom. My granddad picked me up, although he had a hard time carrying me down the stairs. When we got to the bottom, he gently laid me on the couch. After that, he tried to rush over to the phone. He stumbled and almost fell because his legs weren't moving well. He was in pain, but he pushed himself to reach the phone as quickly as he could. Eventually, he got to the phone and called for help. The medics arrived surprisingly fast. Everything felt really strange to me as I was dizzy, confused, and even seeing things that weren't real. I thought I saw my mom standing in the doorway, but she didn't wave or smile. She just looked at me with an empty expression, like she was disappointed. When I got to the hospital, the doctors told me that one of my legs was almost broken in half. The big bone in my leg, called the femur, was really damaged. It took me four whole months to get better, and even now, I walk with a bit of a limp. My grandpa is now quite old in his late 80s. I take care of him just like he took care of me. I'm 19 years old now, and life is still a bit tough for me, I won't lie. But after that accident, I learned an important lesson, to listen to my granddad. He still gives me good advice and helps me even today when I need his advice. This incident occurred when I was in my first year of college. I was 18 and I took the city bus to and from school every day. I felt very safe on the bus because it was a line for the college in my town, so it was pretty much mostly ridden by college students. After the bus, I had about a 10-minute walk from my stop to my house. 
One afternoon, I got out of class and rode the bus home. I got off at my stop and walked my normal route home. I had just gotten onto the street I lived on when a man in a new-looking black truck pulled up next to me. The man was white, chunky, and probably in his late twenties or early thirties. He rolled down his window and asked me where something was. I had my headphones on, so I pulled them out and asked him to repeat his question. He then asked me where something else was, not whatever previous location he had mentioned before I pulled out my earbuds. I thought it was weird, but the longer we talked, the more I realized he might not be genuinely asking for directions. Then he started asking me, what is there to do in this city? I'm new here, to which I told him I didn't know, and that there really isn't much to do, just a mall and that's it. I kept walking while we had this conversation, and he drove really slowly next to me. We were getting closer and closer to my house, and I was getting really uncomfortable. I tried texting my dad that there was some guy talking to me and I was feeling weird, but I noticed my dad's truck wasn't in the driveway, so he wouldn't be much help. He then asked if there was a movie theater at the mall, and I said yes. He asked what movies I liked, and I said I don't watch movies. He asked what TV shows I liked, and I said I don't watch TV both are true, but I was trying to shut him down. He then asked what I did for fun, and I said I was a student. I tried to hint at the idea that I might still be in high school to see if being possibly underage might deter him, but he still pursued. He offered to take me on a date to go see a movie. By this point, we were way past my house, and I obviously didn't want to let him find out where I lived. He offered to come pick me up the following Saturday, and I said no, just flat no. He then tried to tell me I was really pretty, asked if I had a boyfriend the works. I said no, I'm a student, I don't have time for a boyfriend or to date, I'm graduating soon I'm a lesbian anyway. I tried really hard to imply that I might still be in high school to protect myself, assuming he wasn't a total pedo not afraid to date underage girls. He then said, Really? I thought I saw you get off the college bus. All right then, have a good day. I damn near shit myself once I realized he had been following me since I got off the bus. I had been walking for almost 10 minutes by that point. Honestly, he could have even followed me from my college 30 minutes away, since my bus is a city bus of course, its main stop is just the city college. Anyone can get on that bus, and unless you're familiar with the bus lines, you wouldn't know that that bus is ridden by college students. I circled around the block to make sure he wasn't still on my tail before I went home. I told my dad about it and we drove around the block to see if he was someone living in our neighborhood, no dice. I didn't have any other choice but to continue riding that bus to and from school every day, but thankfully I never saw him again. So this is a story from around 10 years ago. I was 16 or 17 at the time, but I recently discovered this sub and it instantly brought these memories flooding back to me. At the time I kind of just brushed it off because nothing bad ended up happening to me and put it down to, I guess shit just happens to you when you are a woman walking alone at night. But looking back now I realize how creepy it really was. I was coming home on my own on a Thursday night after being out at a pub with some friends. We had been out a little more centrally in the city so I had to take a bus on my own to get home to my residential neighborhood. I had done this route hundreds of times so I didn't see it as being particularly dangerous, especially as I live in a fairly nice neighborhood. It was only about 11 p.m., but because I lived in a residential area and it was the middle of the working week when I got off the bus at my stop, it was absolutely dead and there was no one around. Again, this didn't spook me, particularly as it is only about a 5 or 10 minute walk from the bus stop to my house. As I turned down a long residential street that leads towards my house, I noticed a guy walking further down the street. This put me a little on edge, but I was reassured by the fact that he had his back to me and was walking away from me down the street. As I kept walking down the street, I noticed the guy turn around and clock me. That's fine, I thought, I always turn around when I hear someone walking behind me at night, so nothing weird about that. But I noticed as we got further and further down the street he kept doing it, kept checking I was still walking in the same direction as him. At this point I'm starting to get pretty freaked out, 
particularly as I am painfully aware that we are the only two people around. Just as I was weighing up what I should do he turned down the path of one of the houses to our right, and I breathed a sigh of relief, he is going into his house. I was just being paranoid the whole time. The houses in my area are terraced with the front doors being kind of embedded into an enclave at the front of the house. What this means is that from where I was standing about 50 feet away, I couldn't actually see the front door of the house, as it was obscured by the wall. However, I saw him walk down the path and disappear into the front door enclave, so my logical conclusion was that he was letting himself into his house. I can't describe exactly what made me feel like this, but after that initial feeling of relief wore off I suddenly got this really bad feeling so I stopped walking and just stood there. There was this tiny voice in my head that said, what if he is just faking you out? The feeling became so strong that I stepped off the pavement and ducked down behind a parked car and just waited. After a couple of minutes of crouching behind the car staring at the house, I saw movement and my heart stopped. The man came back down the path, out into the street, and was looking around, looking for me. He must have been waiting for me in the doorway, knowing that if I kept walking I wouldn't see him until it was too late. Unfortunately for him, his hiding place also meant that he couldn't see me. So when I didn't walk past as he anticipated, he had to come back out into the street to try and work out where I was. Looking back now, I probably should have called the police at this point. But as a scared teenager, my fight or flight brain took over and I sprinted down one of the roads running perpendicular to the street that we were on, as I knew I could use it to take a slightly longer route home. I didn't stop running until I got home where I quickly double locked the door behind me. Amazingly, I didn't even think to wake anyone in my family up. I literally just went to bed, and then woke up the next morning and went to school. I dread to think what would have happened if I hadn't just suddenly got a bad feeling and stopped walking. Part of me thinks that on some subconscious level my brain must have registered not hearing the front door shut after the man had approached it, and therefore triggered an alarm in my head. But I had no perception of this at the time. Lesson learned. Trust your gut. I wasn't home alone, but I was outside at night alone waiting on my brother and cousin to get ready while my niece was asleep in her car seat. I was standing by the rear driver's side door which was open, I was standing on the inside, and then I just felt chills. Something was watching me. I gave it a good ten seconds of just trying to look into the trees to see if something was there, but this was before I ever had glasses 20 or 200 eyesight so I couldn't see shit. Then it started bolting towards me. I have no idea what my reaction time was to this back. Then I used to get around 120 ms on human benchmark, but it felt like I instantaneously got into the back of the car and had the door slammed shut. I heard it turn direction at the tree right next to the driveway and run into the tree line across the road. That area had coyotes, bobcats, and huge raccoons. No idea if it was one of those or something else. Trust your sixth sense. Thanks for listening. If you like our work, do subscribe because your support helps us keep this channel alive.